Hello, I'm Wayne Rainey. Come follow the Grand Prix this year with me on Eurosport. As the fast men trek around the world in the hunt for the world title, Eurosport brings you every race of every Grand Prix of the World Championship live. 125, 250 and 500cc. This programme is brought to you on Eurosport by Certina. Swiss Action Watch. And Suzuki. Ride the winds of change. The European Motorcycling Grand Prix. The qualifying Saturday 11pm. The warm-up Sunday 10am live. The race Sunday midday live on Eurosport. Rallycross Magazine is brought to you on Eurosport by Clarion, Car Audio and beyond. The land of the midnight sun. A very beautiful setting for round 10 of the European Rallycross Championship. Set amongst lakes and pine-clad hills. A beautiful leisure area, about 80 miles northwest of Helsinki on the road to Tampere. Ideal for backpacking and holidaying. Watch out when you're driving at night for these elks. Pretty much a case of the local fauna eating the local flora. Harmonlina is the name of the town, situated literally uh, amongst all these beautiful waterways and very close to the center of the town which is in fact the birthplace of the famous composer Sibelius is the rallycross circuit and it winds its way around this ski jumping circuit which when the snow comes here of course the Finns are world class at well we've got a bit of an apology to make because last week we said that Gundus Van could no longer beat Ivan Opland, who therefore was going to be crowned the champion. But we forgot all about the young Dutchman, Jos Kuypers, who hasn't actually raced at two of the events. He could still challenge Ivan Opland and win the championship. So it's all to drive for in Division 1. On pole now in these heats, we've got Solstrom on pole position on the right-hand side. Alongside him, Opland in the other yellow car, then Hunsbeck in the middle. Then Kuypers and Leinemann, they're off, Arthur. Yes, they're off, Peter, and it's the escorts making a very good start. Solstrom leading initially, but now it is Ludwig Hunsbett who's come up. I can see that Opland has made a very, very slow start. Opland's down there in fifth position as Ludwig Hunsbett leads an escort. One, two, Kuypers is there in third place. Then Leinemann fourth. And you can see Opland is a long way back at the moment. The man who should be the champion this year, we think, but he's not clinched that championship title as of yet. There is the guy who can take it from him, Jos Kuypers. And as you can see, it was raining when we left Norway, and it's raining now we've got to Finland. Very, very wet here at this circuit, which is the traditional home of European Rallycross in Finland. And it's the 1992 champion in this category, leading this one, Ludwig Kunzbeth, leading Solstrom in third place to Kuypers. Then Leinemann with Opland closing in a bit now. And a bit like Norway, Peter, the circuit quite um, undulating as well as wet. Yeah, I mean, very hilly. Um, and it's a beautiful motor racing circuit, this actually, going through the trees and whatever, the main motor racing circuit, very much like the Nürburgring. And, of course, the rallycross circuit only utilises a little part of that around the paddock area. But explain to us this Jos Kuypers business. It's really quite interesting, isn't it? Yeah, well, Jos Kuypers, you see, has not scored in two rounds. He didn't go to Ireland, and he was excluded in his home country of the Netherlands. And so that means that uh, when it comes to dropped scores, then Jos Kuypers hasn't had any. So he's still in with the chance of taking it, but he's got to do very, very well indeed. Gundersvon has been scoring consistently, so he's got to drop scores. And this is where the situation varies so much, where you can get a driver going very, very well and not scoring as many points as a driver who doesn't go so well, because the guy who hasn't gone so well is probably hasn't got to drop a score. So it's a bit complicated. I would like to see all rounds count, actually, but uh, there we are. At the moment, it doesn't, and this is still the leader then, Ludwig Hunsbeck from Norway, leading the Swede, last Solstrom, in the escort home with Kuypers there in third place. 
Now then, Arthur, at the top of Division 2, it's a tight old squeeze. Hansen just one point ahead of Skanka. Jean-Luc Payet back this week. We've missed him the last couple of events. Will Gollop sort of languishing down there in fifth place. Here's the lineup for the grid then on the right in pole position. Anders Nordstedt in the Saab alongside him Ben Ekstrom in the BMW. Then we've got Camille Verriken and then two local drivers, Marco Laksu and Mino Silenkova. Here's Arthur. Thank you, Peter. And it's the BMW coming away to lead this one from the Belgian driver Camille Verriken in second place. Anders Nordstedt there in third with the Saab. But Ben Ekstrom it is. BMW, if you put a set of number plates on that, you could drive it down the street, I would think scare a few people in the process. It does look very much a wolf in sheep's clothing, this car, but a very, very quick car indeed. Nice to see Bank Dexton back into the sport, as ever, in a BMW, and certainly a very, very comfortable lead here now over Camille Verriek, and the rest of the field really left a long way back. Nordstedt has dropped right back, and as Nordstedt, but there is Bank Dexton leading this one from Camille Verriek, we go back and we can see there that the Nissan is in the third place of Minnesil and Korver, or at least was, I think. We've got Anders Nordstedt has now moved ahead. Yes, Anders Nordstedt back into third place with the Saab, as I would have expected him to have been. The Golf completing the order of Marco Lazzo, but it's the BMW very much in command of this one. And of course, Peter, you were saying earlier about Finland being a very good country for Rallycross, although there are a few drivers from that country here at the moment, I can tell you that uh, they have won no less than six title wins, five of them going to um, Matty Alamaki. A victory there, a going, a two, banked extra from Camel Verican with Norset closing in a bit in third place with the Saab. Yeah, it was a funny old race that for Anders Nordstedt. Now then, the championship leaders. Hansen on pole position. Alongside him, Jean-Luc Poyer in the Zantia. There's the clarion car of Eklund, Will Gollop, and then Michael Jernberg making up the rest of the grid. Yeah, five very different motor cars there, Peter. And a jump start, surely I would have thought, was it from Ackland? Yeah, red flag being waved to... Well, red flag was waved at the back of the order. We can see there that Pally has an argument with the local scenery. Will Gollop went out of our picture, and I think, in fact, that race has... Yes, there it is, confirmation. It has been red flagged. Well, if we look at that again, Artie, you can see that uh, Eklund just gets away. Will Gollop goes with him. Bags of wheel spin from Jernberg. But a shame for Jean-Luc Payet, who, as you say, uh, made contact with the local furniture and is now just making up the order again. So time for the restart. Yes, if they can get it right this time, Peter. Kenneth Hansen desperately wants to do well here this weekend after this string of victories from uh, Martin Skanker, and it is Hansen away into the lead. No, it's not. It is uh, Jean-Luc who's got it. Jean-Luc with the Zantia. Kenneth in second place. Jernberg's come up into third. Will Gollop has made a very, very slow start. Indeed, the British driver going very slowly there with the Peugeot 306 4x4 turbo as Jernberg picks up third place ahead of Per Eklund. But it's the two Citroëns getting away. Now, these two cars are not in the same team. They work very closely together, but they are not in the same team. Citroën must know that there's a very strong chance of the championship going to Ford this year and Kenneth Hansen is the guy who should be able to beat uh, Martin Skanker if anybody can and I'm beginning to wonder there Peter if Jean-Luc deliberately allowed Kenneth to come through are they running a bit of a team orders here well, we're not sure about that, but he certainly looks as if he pulled over and waved it past, didn't well, he? Well, it looked a bit like that. Now he's got a rear guard action, of course, you see. He has got Kenneth in front, and if he can keep all the other guys behind him, he's doing exactly the right thing. Now, I'm not saying Jean-Luc is trying to help Kenneth win the championship deliberately there, but it certainly looked as though Citroen really should do this because, um, really, they want to retain the championship this year, and that would be for the third consecutive year. And um, the best way of doing it, of course, is to help Kenneth as much as they possibly can. And that's what Jean-Luc appears to be doing there. And Kenneth going away there is Will. Oh, look at the understeer there on the Will Gollop Peugeot. Really understeering wildly around that right-hand corner. Michael Yernberg going very well for a privateer, sitting in behind those two uh, Citroëns. Eklund there with the Impreza in fourth place. But this is the Kenneth Hansen, the reigning European champion, in full flight here on yet another wet day in Scandinavia. Kenneth it is from Jean-Luc, who has really got to work hard to keep Jernberg at bay. Big, big motor car there for Jean-Luc, back with us after. Not doing the Norwegian round because of his commitments to the French Championship. And he's still there in second place. And uh, Kenneth getting away. Eklund struggling down there in fourth, but not struggling as much as Will Gollop, who really is quite literally out of the picture. But Kenneth very much in it. Over the brow there, there's Jean-Luc. Still with Jernberg, taking a slightly tighter line through that right-hander and over the brow. But Kenneth throws the ZX 4x4 turbo sideways. 
about 600 plus brake horsepower at his command under that right foot as he accelerates out of this last corner towards the checkered flag and there is victory for the European champion Kenneth Anson from Sweden. Sean Luke second and a good run from the second of the Swedes there, Michael Jönberg into third place. Yeah, it was fascinating to watch the very different lines that Hansen was taking. This loose starting to get quite rutted in certain places now, and Hansen taking a totally different line. The other guy's much tighter. So now then, let's take a look at the top three in each division after those first heats. You can see that Hunsbeck got the fastest time ahead of Lassie Solstrom. Martin Skanker's race we didn't see, but he wasn't as fast as Hansen. Constructors, same power, same drivers, same competition. But when the DTM goes abroad, it becomes the ITC, the International Touring Car Challenge. But it's still on Eurosport. This program is brought to you on Eurosport by Bridgestone. Bridgestone, the science of performance. The ITC Championship from Manicourt, Saturday 10:30 p.m., Sunday 7 p.m. on Eurosport.